Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overtracker magazine and today I'm here to talk to you about the Corsair Dominator Titanium DDR5 8000 kit. And as always, the first thing you want to know about this memory is like how much is it going to cost you? Well, for 48 gigabytes of memory is 285 US dollars on the Corsair website. Trying to get it locally at a local retailers here in SA, that's going to be a bit tricky because the highest SKU that I found was actually DDR5 7200 of the Titanium series and that was around 5,600 Rand. So that is not cheap for memory, especially in this day and age. But if you look at Amazon, you'll also find that you're going to struggle to find this particular kit. So the only real place that I know of where you can buy this memory is on the Corsair website. Anyway, what's cool about this memory is that it has exactly the same timings that you would expect from Hynix A die kits. So that is CL384848, but 1.4 volts instead of the typical 1.45 volts that you would get with those memories. So I thought, hmm, this is actually a pretty good bin then, or rather these are pretty good ICs that are put on this particular SKU in the Titanium series because I haven't seen any other 48 gigabyte kit with these exact same timings. And in fact, the closest one that I did see came from Team Group and that was CL384949 at 1.4 volts. Yes. So seeing as this one was CL384848, I was like, that's fairly impressive. So the reason I say that I think these are a really good bin of ICs on this memory is because there's actually two XMP profiles here. There's one for 8000 of course, but there's another one for 8200 at the exact same voltage but CL405252. What does that say? To me it says that actually this memory may have been tested at 8200 but it's being sold at 8000. To prove this further, when I increased the voltage by about 50 millivolts, I could actually do the same CL384848 at 8200. So I'm thinking this memory was definitely tested at 8200, just sold at 8000. And it does actually make sense because not everybody's IMC can make 8200. And in fact, talking about IMCs, so I'm getting the best set of memory that I've had for DDR5 at a time when I have a CPU that's I think has actually degraded in terms of its IMC capabilities. My 13900K was always better than the 14900K. The 14900K's IMC can't even reliably do 8000 to be honest with you. Whereas this one on the 13900K was doing 8400 and sometimes maybe borderline 8600 but now I can't get it to stabilize anything above 8200. And I think that's just through hammering away at the IMC with a high uh, IMC voltage, VDDQ and all of that. This is a common situation that can happen to many people and not everyone is going to go out and buy a new CPU. So what do you do? You just make the most of what you can. And fortunately with this memory, as I said, you can actually run the same tight timings or CL38 at 8200 at little more than 50 millivolts. In fact, I think I could actually do that at 35 millivolts more. Anyway, let's just take a look at the benchmarks and I'll see you guys on the flip side. All right then, so there you have it. 8200 running CL38 with tighter sub timings is always gonna be the best option for you if you're in a situation like I'm in because it really doesn't do anything to the memory. The memory remains cool and all you're adding is really 50 millivolts more and you're getting so much more performance. I think this is literally where I would be running this memory. Performance and overclocking headroom or the lack thereof because of my CPU isn't what Corsair or the only thing that Corsair is selling you here because I think there are vengeance kits that can actually do 8,000, perhaps even more. So why would you buy this kit? Well, you're buying because of the design. You're buying because of the quality of the finish. You're buying because of the heat sinks. All of these other things that don't directly contribute to performance, 
Does that mean it's worth the price premium? Is it worth paying $285 for 48 gigabytes of memory? It's up to you to decide. And if all you want is just high speed memory, there are definitely cheaper alternatives. In fact, the cheaper alternatives are from Corsair themselves, as I said, in the Vengeance series. But if you want something more than just, why do they say it? The sum of its parts, then this kind of memory is exactly what you want. Not necessarily for extreme overclocking, but because you just want the best of the best. And right now, in as far as the DDR5 memory I've tested, in terms of aesthetics, the design, the presentation, attention to detail, just the packaging and just the heatsink quality and so forth, no better memory has come my way. And that stands to reason because this is literally the most expensive DRAM kit for DDR5 at least that I've tested. So I should be expecting that. Now, will you appreciate the visuals of this memory? That's up to you. It does come in white as well, but I definitely am partial to the black one, especially if you just have one uniform color on it, like a white or a purple or what have you. It really looks great on a black motherboard as well, like the Apex Encore and all of that stuff. But anyway, let me know what you guys think of this Corsair Dominator Titanium DDR5-8000 kit of memory. Are you using it right now? Would you even consider it? Are you the kind of person that is drawn to these sort of specialist kits that are not necessarily, how do you say, the ones that are readily available everywhere? And if you are, what compels you to buy these kits? Anyway, that's enough for me for today about the Corsair Dominator Titanium DDR5-8000 memory kit. And until the next time, remember to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.